This is the story of Mulga Bill Bicycle. And Mulga Bill lived in a time when people travelled by horse, not cars. And the first bicycles were invented and they were called penny farthings and we'll see how he goes with it. He looks very proud of his penny farthing and the children have never seen one before so they've come to have a look. One wheel at the front's really big and the wheel at the back's really small. So he read about it and he saw pictures of it and he showed his dog and he said, oh, I'd really like one of those. Twas Mulga Bill from Eagle Hawk that caught the cycling craze. He turned away the good old horse that served him many days. He <clears throat> dressed himself in cycling clothes resplendent to be seen. He hurried off to town and bought a shining new machine. He looks excited. And as he wheeled it out through the door with air of lordly pride, the grinning shop assistant said, Excuse me, can you ride? See here, young man, said Mulga Bill, from Walgut to the sea, from Conroy's Gap to Castlereagh, there's none can ride like me. I'm good all round at everything, as everybody knows, although... I'm not the one to talk. I hate a man that blows. But riding is my special gift, my chiefest sole delight. Just ask a wild duck, can it swim? A wild cat, can it fight? There's nothing clothed in hair or hide or built of flesh or steel. There's nothing walks or jumps or runs on axle, hoof or wheel. But what I'll sit while hide will hold and girths and straps are tight... I'll ride this here two-wheeled concern right straight away at sight. So he has to climb up on the back wheel and sit up on the seat and start to pedal. He's never done it before. The seat sits on the frame, yeah, and he feels, oh, he looks very proud of himself. And there's a boy up a tree that's looking and watching. He's never seen anyone ride one before. T'was Mulga Bill from Eagle Hawk that sought his own abode, that perched above the dead man's creek beside the mountain road. So he's going to ride at home. He turned the cycle down the hill and mounted for the fray, but ere he'd gone a dozen yards, it bolted clean away. It got away from him. Oh, it's out of control. It left the track and through the trees just like a silver streak. It whistled down the awful slope towards the dead man's creek. It shaved a stump by half an inch. It dodged a big, big white box. The very wallaroos in fright went scrambling up the rocks. The wombats hiding in their caves dug deeper underground. But Mulga Bilgas, as white as chalk, sat tight to every bound. It struck a stone and gave a spring that cleared a fallen tree. Uh-oh... It raced beside a precipice as close as close can be. And then as Mulga Bill let out one last despairing shriek, it made a leap of 20 feet into the dead man's creek. "'Twas Mulga Bill from Eagle Hawk that slowly swam ashore. He said, "'I've had some narrow shaves and lively rides before. "'I've rode a wild bull round a yard to win a five-pound bet, "'but this was sure the derndest ride that I've encountered yet. "'I'll give that two-wheeled outlaw best. "'It's shaken all my nerve to feel it whistle through the air "'and plunge and buck.' and swerve. 
it's safe at rest in Dead Man's Creek. We'll leave it lying still. A horse's back is good enough henceforth for Mulga Bill. He loves his horse again.